Okay, let's see if we can unravel some secrets about Mother Nature. Now, this is the first and only video that you'll ever see explaining this. No one has ever unraveled the secret of the sand dollar before. You know, the neat. Now, there are a couple of insane, nonsensical fables that surround it, but there's never been an actual explanation of uh, this pattern. This is a keyhole sand dollar. Some sand dollars actually just have these marks. Here's a top side. Here's a bottom side, of course. Here's another sand dollar. We have a little keyhole here. And there's another one that actually has slits here at the bottom all the way through instead of in the sand dollar. Some people call this a uh, arrowhead dollar because it kind of looks like an old Indian arrowhead. But the point being is this. And what's this? You know? And why is this hole off center from uh, the center of the sand dollar? You know, always wondered about that many years. So this is the first explanation you'll see of it. Let's see if Mother Nature is trying to tell you something. Okay. Hmm. On the other side, we have this neat pattern. We have a hole here. We have another one here. But this is actually off center. Let's see if we can apply simplex Pythagorean and Platonic understanding of the golden ratio to this. Oh my. Let's take a look closer here. <laughs> the golden angle. Before we take a look at this, here's the golden angle. You know, this kind of looks like a sunflower. The golden angle is 137.5077 degrees. This one's a little inaccurate. It says 137.508 degrees. Okay, mimicked everywhere in nature. Golden angle, 137.5077 degrees. Phylotaxis. Golden ratio, 5 is to 1 is 1 is to 5. Everything from macro to micro is mimicked with the golden angle. It even defines the very nature of the universe's most fundamental field, magnetism, as I discovered in my equation. So, here we have uh, some different rectangles. In uh, black, we have uh, three different triangles of 108, 36, 36 degrees, making up the Pythagorean triangle. 1, 1, phi. Hmm, interesting. Okay, turn it upside down. If we only take a look at the black, we have the Pythagorean, which actually pre predates the Pythagoreans. It uh, might have belonged originally to the Egyptians. We'll never know. But we know it at least goes back to the ancient Pythagoreans. The Pythagorean pentagram, ratio of 1, 1, and phi. And also, 1 over phi to the power of negative 3 equals phi cubed, or 4.23606. And here we have the golden angle. You see how the center of the sand dollar is just off-center? That is that is because that's the incommensurate point. Here we have two golden triangles that make up the geometry of the sand dollar. But we have three things going on here. We have another triangle up here with a base apex of 85 millimeters. This is 1. In, uh, Pyth in Pythagorean triangle speak, this triangle is 1, this one is phi, and this is phi. So we have 1, phi, phi. This way we have 1, 1, phi, 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, and phi cubed. Interesting. You can go on like this for hours as far as incommensurability and not current connotation of a rather intricate term, but ancient original denotation of incommensurability. Or as in uh, the ancient Egyptian, it was aorismos, or aoristos in the Greek. And that would be uh, literally without horizon, if you were to translate it literally, but that's not what it means. A literal translation is not original meaning. So, this is the secret behind the geometry of the sand dollar. The golden angle of 137.5077 degrees, and the perfect Pythagorean pentad with apex of 1, 1, and phi, and incommensurate at 1 over phi to the power of negative 3, phi cubed. Very, very This, by the way, this is part of the secret that I found in the, the ancient Greek of Plato's Republic 509D to 511. And I found a secret in there in the Plato's Republic on the divided line section nobody else has seen before. And that ancient secret hidden in the works of Plato 
was actually the key to this long, long, long mystery first solved by me, the geometry of... There's a dual, well it's actually triple, a triplet geometry hidden within the sand dollar. It's hidden all throughout nature, but it's not hidden because it's hidden. It's hidden because humans are stupid. We can't see the obvious. Now, let's take a look at the most fundamental force. Is that golden angle hidden in nature's most fundamental, fundamental, the absolute, absolute, absolute most fundamental principle in the whole universe, magnetism? Mm, let's see. This is an invention by my buddy Tim Vanderelli. It's the ferro cell. Very, very simple. It's two pieces of optically flat glass. In between is just a smear of ferrofluid. Less than a micron thin. Let's see if we put a magnet underneath it. What happens? Mm -hmm. Let's place the magnet underneath. Let's zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh -huh. Let me see. Move it down here. Mm -hmm. Let me zoom in a little bit. And just a little bit more. There we go. Zoom in. Yeah. There we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. What do we see here? Mmm. That, 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 that. I don't know. That you know, kind of looks like that. Oh my god. It's the same thing. Shazam! Shazam! Bam! Nailed it! Epic. You're right. Nature's most fundamental principle. Force in motion. Field divergence. By the way, Faraday was the person who came closest to explaining what magnetism is. Far closer than anybody since. He called it the dielectric field. What magnetism follows exactly is a theoretical model of Henri Poincaré. And by the way, nobody stole more stuff at any point in time collectively than did Einstein. 90% of what he stole, he stole from Henri Poincaré and a few others. But anyway, magnetism follows the Henri Poincaré uh, model of projective geometry. The Poincaré disk model, look it up, Google it, Google Poincaré disk model. This is the hypertrochoid. What's a hypertrochoid? A hey, spirograph pattern for you layman. Oh, okay, I know what a spirograph pattern looks like. Yes. The reciprocating processional hyperboloid that defines nature's most fundamental source. Here we are looking at the magnet. Now, let's take a look at something here. Remember that EM phase shift I told you about? Remember? The same thing that causes seeds to grow differently? Tell me what color this is. Bluish, isn't it? Tell me what color this is. Reddish, isn't it? Simply by looking at the EM retardation phase shift underneath this ferro cell, I know for a fact that since this is blue shifted, it's the south pole. Since this is red shifted, it's the north pole. Look at that. Simply by color alone. And by the way, what you're seeing right here, pay attention, pay attention. What you're seeing right here is what birds see to navigate by. See, birds have cryptic... Now, we've known that birds navigate via magnetism, but we didn't know. We, they can't see magnetism. They can't actually see it. Well, we know they navigate by magnet. Yeah, but how do they navigate? See, nobody can see magnetism. We can only see the effects of what magnetism does to other things, and that's what birds do. See, when uh, birds are heading various directions, when they turn, the uh, sunlight looks bluish or it looks reddish, depending on which direction they're heading, north or south. So what birds see is not the magnetism, but the effect of magnetism upon sunlight coming through the atmosphere. So they move one direction, it's blue shifted, and they move the other direction, it's red shifted. See this blue? See this red here? This is the magnet on its side, by the way. Man, if you could see this ferro cell up close and look down on it at an angle, you would see, see amazing holographic depth. Let me put it back on its end again. Let me focus a little bit here. All right. Focus. Someone's going, focus. All right. See, even you can see that holographic, like, bold projection. Yeah. 
Everything in nature is really, really simple. It's not a secret. You know what the secret is? The secret is, it's not a secret. It's that human beings are very, very stupid. Dumb. Ah, dumb. You don't learn this stuff in school, do you? Nope. Why? Because people are stupid. Dumb. Very dumb. It's kind of like Mother Nature is screaming to you with a foghorn in your ear, but you're going, ah. You're not listening. Nature's screaming at you, but you got your ears closed. You're like Helen Keller. You are going through life like Helen Keller. La da 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 da. Mother Nature's screaming to you. Look, and you're going, la da 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 da. You're stupid. That's all right. Everybody else is stupid too. Well, almost everybody. <laughs> oh, there we go. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff or like fall into a black hole. You see why this part here in the middle is black? That's the plane of entropy. Increasing inertia. Increasing acceleration. Out here is increasing force and motion. Towards this direction is increasing inertia and acceleration. You saw it here first. You saw it here. You've had basically the entire universe explained to you in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Bye.